Hi everybody, I'd like to do a video on the 2002 Red Sox yearbook. And as you can tell, this is another small yearbook I have, but um, it's actually slightly bigger than the 2000 and the 2001 yearbook. So this is where they start to get a little bit bigger. But anyways, um, on the cover, it shows um, <clears throat> Pedro Martinez, Norma Garcia Parra, and Manny Ramirez, one of the greatest players of all time. And of course, as you can see right there, this on the sleeve right there, it's this is the f the 2002 Red Sox yearbook is the 50th Red Sox yearbook to ever be released. And of course, it's on this section right here where the flap is. It shows all the yearbooks ranging from 1951 to 2001. Which these are all the yearbooks right here. I'll show you. Okay, the covers are shown there. We got. I'll, sh I'll show them right here. I'm gonna zoom in on the camera so you can get a closer look at it. So yeah, that's all the that's all the front covers of the yearbooks ranging from. 1951 to 2000 to 2001. Sorry, I gotta fix the zoom on my camera. But anyways, um, it's another flap flipper here. And then there's a description about a new day. Um, on December 20th, 2001, the Red Sox CEO John Harrington announced that they would sell the franchise to John Henry, who's the owner of the Red Sox. And he's been the owner of the Red Sox since 2002. And then Tom Warner and Larry Lucchino. And then from left to right it shows Tom Warner, John Henry, Larry Luch and Larry Lucchino with Pedro Martinez, Manny Ramirez, Nomar Garcia Parra. That's who they're with. So that 2002 is the year John Henry bought the, the Red Sox. Here's a schedule. That's the 2000. That's the schedule for the 2002 season, and it gives a description about all three of those guys. All right, and this is, and then this was our manager Grady Little, which, um, which he, which he became our manager in 2002 because Jimmy Williams, the previous manager, was fired in 2001 because the Red Sox were struggling during that time. And they still struggled in 2002. And he was our manager from up until 2003. And then he was fired because um, Grady Little did not take Pedro Martinez off the mound in Game 7. In Game 7 of the 2003 ALCS against the Yankees. And then afterwards, Pedro Martinez gave up the runs. And then the Red Sox lost the series against the Yankees in seven games. There was a good thing, though, in the 2003 playoffs. The good thing about it was that the Red Sox came back from a two-games-to-one deficit, two-games-to-none deficit, excuse me, against the Athletics and the ALDS. And they won the wild card that year. Coaches, nothing special. I mean, the only, the only coaches I'm f that are familiar in this section are Dwight Evans and Mike Stanley. Those are the familiar ones right there. And then the first player, of course, is Pedro Martinez, like in the last two yearbooks. And and in the background of the players' photos, it, pictures, um, it actually shows Fenway Park, but in red. And that's actually what it shows on the cover, too, which is really interesting. I don't know why they chose red for a background, but that's pretty cool. Then we got Nomar Garcia Parra. And... There's, there's actually a profile section on these player about these players. I forgot to mention that, and this is actually the first yearbook that has the profile sections on. For Pedro Martinez, his description is that he was unanimously selected in 2000 for his third and second consecutive A American League CY Young Award. He's one of the two active. He was one of the two only two active um, MLB pitchers to record an ERA under two points. Zero zero 
in two seasons. He had a 1.90 ERA in 1997, 1.74 ERA in 2000. And then here's Nomar Garcia Parr. His description is that um, in 2001, he became the first American League right-handed hitter to win consecutive batting titles since Joe DiMaggio in 1939-1940. In 2001, he was named in his third All-Star team. And in 1998, finished second in the American League MVP voter. Right, and then Manny Ramirez, um, for his profile, um, he joined Jimmy Fox and Dick Stewart in 2001 as the only Red Sox players to hit 40 or more home runs in their first season with the club. And he had a 557 RBI since the start of the 1998 season, which ranks only to Sammy Sosa. All right, Trot Nixon's the next one. Profile about him, he, Trot Nixon um, set set a personal career high in 2001 in home runs. He had 27 home runs, 88 RBIs, and scored 100 runs and ranked 10th from the American League average versus right-handed pitchers. He led the Sox outfielder in 2001 with four double plays and seven assists. All right, next player we got Jason Veritek. And it actually shows another another player um, in uniform right there. That's a cool thing about this yearbook. All right, for Jason Veritek, he became the first Red Sox catcher to hit three home runs in a game on May 20th, 2001, at Kansas City against the Royals. He had 20 home runs in 1999 and 39 doubles that year, tied Carlton Fisk for the most ever by a Sox catcher. All right, next one, let's see who's the next one, Tony Clark. He made his first ever All-Star appearance in 2001 with the Tigers. In, 19, in 1997, he became the fifth fastest player in Amer MLB history to hit 50 home runs at Fenway Park on June 28th in his 202nd career game. It's a very interesting fact. I forgot to point this out. Um, this is actually the first yearbook that has this, these autographs, I believe. Or they might be in the, the other two yearbooks I looked at, but that's a fun fact. The players' autographs are in these, these on pages in the yearbook. And then here's Johnny Damon, which the Red Sox acquired him in 2002 um, from the Athletics. He played, on the, he played on the Royals from 1994. Five to 2003. No, my bad. Johnny Damon played on the Royals from 1995 to 2000. Then he played on the Athletics in 2001. The Red Sox from 2002 to 2005. The Yankees from 2006 to 2009. And then the Tigers in 2010. Rays in 2011. And the Indians in 2012. And Johnny Damon hit hit a point four hundred nine with two. Stolen bases in 2000, in 2001. In the 2001 ALDS for the Athletics in, two, in 2000. While with the Royals, he led the American League in 136 runs, 46 stolen bases, and he let off 10 straight games with a hit. Alright, next one I got, let's see, Dustin Hermanson, who won a World Series with the White Sox, along with Carl Everett. Dustin Hermanson worked 6.0 or more innings in 22 of his 33 starts in 2001 for the Cardinals. Pitched three hitless innings in the 2001 NLDS. And in 1997 with the Expos. Then we got Derek Lowe. Another one of the greatest. Um, Derek Lowe began his career as the Red Sox closer and he holds fifth and he held fifth place in the all-time save list. Yeah, and Derek Lowe was actually the closer before we got Keith Folk. That's a fun fact. Then Derek Lowe became starter. There we got Tim Wakefield's the next one. He held opponents for a 2.248 average as he worked 45 for the Red Sox in 2001, including 17 starts and 28 relief appearances. And he pitched a hitless inning on 
on June 19, 2001 in Tampa Bay against the Devil Rays. The longest he has taken a no-hitter. All right, next one, Ray Sanchez. He set a new personal high in 2001. Combined totals with the Royals and Braves with 153 hits and six triples. And he ranks second for the American League shortstops. Shea Hillenbrand. He hit his first Major League home run on nobody. Oh, never mind, sorry. Okay, he hit his first Major League home run. Let me think, where was I? Sorry, I got this. Sorry, I got distracted for a minute. Where was I? Uh, let's see. Okay, he hit his first Major League home run on April 7th, 2001, in his fifth Major League game with the Red Sox. And he was named the Minor League Player of the Year for Trenton in 2000. Huh, interesting fact about him. I'm learning facts about these players that I'm not familiar with in this year, but just because I'm not familiar with most of them, because I didn't watch the Red Sox much until 2003, when they became good. All right, let's see the next one is Ricky Henderson. He holds the American League, I mean the all-time, excuse me, Major League career records. Major League records, sorry, I paused for a minute just because I got lost where I was. And he has 79 leadoff home runs in 23 consecutive seasons. So your next one is John Burkett, another player I'm not familiar with, which he was named to the National League All-Star team for the second time in 2001 when he ranked third with the National League. And then we got Yuga Firbina. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong because I'm having trouble pronouncing it. He, he struck out 32 batters in 20 innings pitch for the Sox after being acquired in a trade on July 31st, 2001. And he was voted for the 1999 Sporting News National League Fireman of the Year when he led the National League with 41 saves for the Expos. Who's the next one? Jose Offerman. Okay, he hit .294 with 107 runs in his first season with the Red Sox in 1999 and was selected to the American League All-Star team that same season. And he led the American League in triples in both 1998 and 1999 with the Royals. Rich Garcia, he was 19-3 in his relief appearance with the Red Sox from 1999 to 2001. And he had a .864 winning percentage. Best among major league pitchers. And in 2000, he became the first ever Sox reliever to start 8-0. It's an interesting fact about him. Something I never knew about him until now. He got he went 8-0 and he was the first reliever to go 8-0. Alright, Frank Castillo is the next one. He won 10 or more six in consecutive major league seasons for the first time in 2000 to 2001. And then Roland Arrojo appeared in 41 games for the Red Sox in 2001, including nine starts. And he compiled a 180-60 and 60 record for the Cuban national team. Excuse me, sorry, I just, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Anyone want to know for Team Cuba, which they won the gold medal in 1992? Let's use the next one. Carlos... Bayarga, another player I'm not familiar with. He was voted for the American League All-Star Team at second base in 1993, 1994, and 1995 for the Indians. In 1993, he became the only player in Major League history that hit home runs from both sides of the plate in the same inning. Wow, that's pretty cool. Interesting fact about him. Brian Dalback, next one. Let's see what he said. In 2001, he became the fifth player in Red Sox history to hit 20 or more home runs in each of his first three Major League seasons. His first Major League homer was a game-winning ninth-inning three-run shot for the Red Sox in 1999 in Toronto against the Blue Jays. Lou Merlani hit his first Major League home run on May 15, 1998, and his first ever at-bat at Fenway Park, and had his first Major League career two-home run game on October 1, 2001 at Tampa Bay against the Devil Rays. 
and the 1999 ALDS, he hit .333 for the Sox with two hits and an RBI. Next one, Doug Mirabelli. I'm, I'm definitely familiar with him because I actually grew up watching him. I watched, I watched him play on both the Red Sox and the Padres, which he actually played for the Padres for one season, then came back to the Red Sox. And he got to win two World Series rings with them. He dogged Mirabelli throughout 34% of runners attempting to steal and ranked second in American League double place by a catcher in 2001 for the Red Sox and the Rangers. Yeah, he, was also, he also played on the Rangers too. And he had his first Major League Grand Slam on August 21st, 2001 against the Angels at Anaheim. All right, Casey Fossum's next one. He recorded his first Major League win for the Red Sox on August 6, 2001 with two relief innings of shutout ball. In 2000, he led all Class A pitches with three shutouts and he threw a no-hitter for Sarasota. Then we got Darren Oliver. He tied for second in 2001 on the Rangers pitching staff with 11 wins. He led the Rangers in 1997 with 13 wins. And he is 5-1 and one with 15 lifetime against the Yankees, including a 2-0 record with a 1.38 ERA in 2001. Who's the next player? We got Sonny Kim. Another one I'm not familiar with. He led the Pawtucket pitching staff in 2000 with, in wins, games, started innings, and pitched, pitched in strikeouts at 18 years old. He was the youngest player ever to represent Korea. And in the Olympics in 1990s, in the summer of 1996. That's a cool fact. Willie Banks allowed only one earned run and five relief appearances with the Red Sox after signing as a free agent on August 23, 2001. In 1994, while pitching for the Cubs, he had a no-hitter for eight for eight innings, like versus the Phillies. But of course, the 1994 season was cut short because of the strike. And that's why there was no postseason in the World Series. Michael Coleman, another player I'm not familiar with. He was selected as the Red Sox AAA Player of the Year in 1999 when he hit 30 home runs with 74 RBI in Pawtucket. In 2001, playing for the Yankees, he hit his first Major League home run. And he returned to the Red Sox on November 21st, 2001 in the free agency. And, of course, career statistics. Okay, you got Willie Banks. He played on the Twins, then the Cubs, Dodgers, Marlins, Yankees, and the Red Sox. Then John Burkett played for the Giants, the uh, Marlins, Rangers, the Braves, and the Red Sox. Frank Castillo played for, let's see, where did he play? Oh, wait, I already talked about him previously, so I don't have to read about it. Tony Clark, I'm going to read about him. He played for the Tigers and the Red Sox. Michael Coleman played for the Red Sox. Talked about Johnny Damon already. Let's see. Yeah, whatever player I don't talk about in the career statistics, I already talked about in the previous video. So that's just that's just that's just a heads up I want to give. All right, Ricky Henderson. Oh, he played for a lot of teams. Look at that. He first made his debut in 1979, which is crazy. Something I didn't know until now. He played for the Athletics, the Yankees. Then he played for the Athletics for the second time. Then the Blue Jays. Then the Athletics for the third time. Padres for the first time, then Angels, then Padres second time. Athletics for a fourth time, Mets, Mariners. Padres for the third time, and then the Red Sox. Well, he went to a lot of teams. You can see, if, if you can see how long that career statistic is, that means he played for several teams, which is crazy. From, and he started in 1979, which is just utterly crazy. Dustin Hermanson, I know, played for... Padres, Expos, Cardinals, Red Sox, and the White Sox. That's all I know off the top of my head. Sun Woo Kim, Red Sox. I 
Fun fact about Pedro Martinez, he was both an ace pitcher for the Red Sox and the Expos. That's a fun fact about Pedro Martinez. All right, Doug Milani played for the Giants, um, Rangers, then the Red Sox. Then he went to the Padres, then he went back to the Red Sox. And then Jose Offerman's got a long play. Statistic 2. He was on the Angels, Royals, and the Red Sox. Darren Oliver was on the Rangers, Cardinals, and then the Red Sox. Ray Sanchez. Let's see where he was on. He was on the Cubs, Yankees, Giants, Royals, Braves. Back on the Royals for the second time, then the Red Sox. All right, Urbina, let's see where he played on. He played for, let's see, the Expos and the Red Sox. Then we got Sox on the rise, Jorge De La Rosa, Juan Diaz, Chris Elmore, Joshua Hancock, Steven Lomazny. Corey De La Rosa, I gotta point out, I'm actually familiar with because he he played on the Rockies. Anastasio Martinez, Juan Pena, Freddie Sanchez, Angel Santos, Darnell Stenson, Wilton Veras, Jeffrey Wallace. Paxton Crawford, Jen Ocho, Rolando Vieira, Siyoon Jun Sung, and then these are the 2001 farm stats for the minor leaguer. That's the season, regular season schedule.